Hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Games. Welcome back to Alter Ego. Um, <clears throat> uh, we were doing our teen years, and we were at our first rock concert with our friends. I hope it's a good band. Midway through the concert, someone passes you a joint, tells you it's okay to take some. I'm going to stop. The reason I'm going to stop isn't because I have anything against pot. If people want to smoke pot, that's cool, but it's not. It's not my thing. Alcohol, hell yeah, I'll drink a ton of alcohol, but pot's just not my thing. So I'm gonna. No thanks. I appreciate the offer, but it's not my thing. Um, let us... Oh, shit. Let us leave this icon. We'll come back to it later. What about the school thing? Mr. Andre, your French teacher, who everyone in the school claims is gay, has asked for your help clean up his office after school today. He asks you in front of a whole group of your friends who begin to look at one another and make faces. What will you do? Um, I'm going to tell him I have something to do after school. Like, I have to go home and play video games or something? I have better things to do than be your fucking slave, Mr. Andre. Clean your own goddamn room. Do you come to my house, Mr. Andre, and help me clean my bedroom? No. No, you don't. So why should I clean your, clean your school room? Clean your own damn room. That's your job. You get paid for it. Fucking loser. Completely shaken up by the request. You tell him to... You work in a local coal mining operation and have almost no time to yourself. You quickly excuse yourself. Your friends tease you anyway, saying, Why did he ask you in the first place? I wasn't worried about the gay thing. I just... I don't want to do work. A little while later, on the back of the cereal box, you see a cont contest to name the cartoon character that represents the cereal. You enter, and because you are very bright and creative, you win! Your prize package consists of a new bicycle, a $100 gift certificate, and a one-year supply of crunchy marshmallow Chewios. Oh, yeah. I wonder if... I was going to say if Cindy likes them. I almost made the giant big error when you date, calling my current girlfriend by my old girlfriend's name. <laughs> Ooh, it's time for senior prom. Are you going to attend? Well, in real life, I didn't, because that's not my thing. But since I have a girlfriend, Louisa would probably want to go. Who will you be going with? Um, I'm going to go with the person I am currently dating, Louisa. Eventually, you ask this person, Louisa, and she accepts. Your date looks resplendent in a sexy white strapless number. The events that transpire over the course of the evening include the you and your date have a great time. Is that it? We just have a good time. It is until you try to get romantic with her by suggesting you spend the night in the hotel. She asks if you want to spend the night in the hospital. Damn it, Louisa! Why can't I get laid? You're very attractive. I'm going to ask you to go steady. Maybe I can finally get laid? You, you and Louisa make a handsome couple. Yes! I'm going to go on a date with her. Louisa spent the afternoon with her parents, visiting friends of the family. When you see Louise, uh, she can't stop talking about John, the son. What? I just asked you to go steady, you whore. Are you going to be like Cindy? When Louise and John were young, everyone joked about how nice it would be if they got married when they got older. Isn't that cute? Anyway, Louise goes on to tell you that John grew up to be an absolute hunk. What? With the cutest set of dimples on his cheeks? What? I'm not your best friend to hear you... Girl cream over someone else. When she finishes her detailed description. She squeals. He just looked like one of those calendar models. I could have died. How do you feel about this? I feel a little bit threatened. I learned not to be insanely jealous. That's understandable. From what I understand, Louise, she's not the most trustworthy type. What? I know that's difficult to hear, but it was one of her characteristics when you met her earlier. She was moderately trustworthy. Moderately. Should examine why you would want to stay with someone who you might not trust completely. Because she's super freaking hot. I'm just trying to get laid. Is it just you being overly concerned, or is there really a danger she might abandon you for the first gorgeous available guy that comes along? What? A little while later, you found a new way of expressing yourself through the way you comb your hair straight up like a mohawk? I always wanted a mohawk. I wish I would have had one when I was younger. Everyone in the house just treats you like some kind of alien until you get a more convenient hairstyle. My family, what a bunch of asses. They neglected me as a child, now they judge me for my hairstyle, and they judge me when I wanted to wear a dog color as a fashion statement. They are very fickle, shallow people. Relationship with family members have become even cooler than they already are. Because of my hair? Because of my hair? Are you kidding me? 16. 16. They reject me because of my hair. I'm putting them all in an old folks' home. As soon as I can. That's why I'm not calm. Um...
You and a group of your friends are getting together to go to a movie. Your best friend and his date are picking you up at your house, and the three of you meeting everyone else, including your own date, Luis, at the theater. The doorbell rings, and you're greeted by a dark-haired beauty with sparkling eyes and a devastating figure. Oh. She smiles at you and tells you that her name is Cheryl. A friend is waiting in the car because he isn't feeling well. Uh, in the car and at the movies, you and Cheryl make small talk. After all, your best friend isn't feeling up to par. You wouldn't want Cheryl to have a lousy time and resent him. Besides, your date seems to be so engrossed in the movie, she doesn't seem to mind, either. Wait, so I'm talking during the movie? That's rude. Midway through the movie, your friend pulls you aside and asks if you wouldn't mind taking Cheryl home. He knows she is enjoying the movie, and he is feeling too ill to stay. Um... Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll take Cheryl home for you. Don't worry, dude. Go home. You're feeling sick. I'll take your sexy friend home. I am going to take... Oh, God. Fuck it. I'm going to take Louise home first. She wants to cream over John or whatever the fuck his name is. She can go home first. I'm going to take Louise home first. With you and Cheryl alone in the car, Cheryl mentions what a great friend you must be and thanks you for being so considerate all the way around. She invites you inside the house for a few minutes. Oh, okay, I'll come inside. Cheryl gets you a cold drink and sits down next to you on the couch. She jokes that she feels as if you were her date for tonight. After all, you were s took such good care of her. She thanks you again and kisses you on the cheek. After she kisses you, she keeps her face close to yours. She looks at you for a long second and begins to bring her lips up to yours. Damn it. Cheryl, you don't know how bad I want to bone you. If there was a, you know, a scale from one to bonerific, you would be beyond bonerific. But despite the fact that Louise is questionable, I am a loyal boyfriend. I can't kiss you, Cheryl. I'm sorry. You did a valiant thing. The next day, you mentioned the event to your friend. He tells you, you should have gone for her, man. After all, what are her friends for? Sometimes life is pretty tough to figure it out. Look, I've got a girlfriend, dude. Who I'm going steady with. It's not right for me to cheat on her. Now I'm going to take her out because she better give me some. <laughs> I'm going on a date with Louise. You and Louise are both thinking through your decisions about going to college. Louise wants to go to a college as a strong pre-veterinary program. There are none in the area. Making that college would mean that she would need to travel a great distance. You want to see each other for long periods of time. Which one of these reflects your feelings on this? Um, I have mixed feelings. Your ambivalence puts you in two directions at once. You want to please yourself by having Louise with you, but you want to please Louise by supporting her decision to go away to college. This is not something you can work out in one short period. It is a difficult problem to resolve. Think about it. Is it worth trying to have Louise uh, tie Louise down close to you if it means the possibility she'll resent you for it later on? Oh, uh, that means she's going to go to college and forgive me. I should have just dumped her and gone with Cheryl. Why did I do the right thing? I have tempted to break up with Cheryl. We do a vacational one. You notice someone stealing an extremely large amount of valuable property from work. Uh, I'm going to tell the guy to stop. Quit stealing shit from work. He says, mind your own goddamn business. And sneers at you. You can do. Yeah, I'm going to tell the boss. I wouldn't normally do that. But if like, if he steals a little bit. Like, if we're working at a bakery and he steals a cake. I don't give a fuck. But if he's like, if we work like at a forklift factory. And he's stealing forklifts. Then that's a problem. The boss asks if you can prove what you're saying. Fuck you, boss! Fuck you! Why would I come... At this is why you should never be an art. Since you have no pictures of direct evidence, he tells you there's nothing I can do. This is one of those times where you think the whole world is completely batshit insane. Sometimes it just about is. A little while later, you're walking home from the library late at night when all of a sudden you're ambushed by three older kids. They turn you upside down and empty your pockets. They punch you and kick you for no reason. Because your physical condition before the incident was poor, you were hindered by injuries for a long time after this incident. Great. Fucking life, man. Life. So I'm like at my job, and this guy each day is going home with a new forklift, and I'm like, Jim, you can't do that. And I'm like, yo, boss, Jim's stealing the forklifts. The boss is like, yeah, you got any evidence? They're the last forklifts. Well, I can't do anything about it. Ugh. Then I'm going home disgusted, and I get mugged by some assholes. I'm just going to do something social. A group of friends are getting together for a toga party. Yes! I am going to the motherfucking party. You arrive at the party stunningly draped in one of your best mo mom's best sheets. On the table there is beer, wine, and hard liquor. Uh, someone mentions that there are drugs available for sale from a person at the other end of the room. What would you per prefer to have? Well, I don't like drugs. I'm not into drugs. I don't like wine. I do like beer. 
But what I drink the most of, honestly, is hard liquor. This is probably not going to end well. How wild would you like to get at this party? I want to get fucking maniacal. <laughs> like hanging off the chandeliers and pooping. Are you planning to try and meet any girls at this party? Sure, why not? The combination of your mood and your choice of substance use makes you rowdy and obnoxious. No one will bother with you, but word gets back to your girlfriend that you're looking out for a good time, so she dumps you. Oh, shh. But I... Luis, I stayed loyal. Oh, God. Seriously? Should have been better behaved. She was right. She was right. I should have been better behaved. Your parents have gone out for the night. You and your two friends are sitting around with nothing much to do. One of your friends ask, what kind of booze do your parents have in the house? Um, yeah, I'm bored and ready to experiment. Let's get rid of the liquor cabinet. You and your friends polish off a bottle of scotch mm, and a bottle of rum. Everyone gets stinking drunk. Before you pass out, you refill the b liquor bottles with water. Your parents come home and see the casualties. Everyone gets in trouble. Aww. A little while later, hey, it's time to graduate from high school. So what was our high school experience? You know, we were a player more in middle school. Middle school, I dated someone who was going to become a rich model. I touched boob. In high school, someone gave me their number. I was like, well, I can't do anything with it. Someone tried to kiss me. I'm like, no, I got a steady girlfriend. Then I got drunk, and I'm like, where are the ladies at? And my girlfriend found out and dumped me, even though I didn't do anything. Even though she was creaming over some other dude. Mid How was middle school the good years? Middle school's not the good years for anyone. <laughs> it's time to graduate from high school. You can't go back to high school, the high school icon again during this game. You have above average to superior intelligence are an excellent candidate for college. Is this high school? Is there a college one? Or does that come later? So an unattached drugstore clerk who's reasonably intelligent. How do I go to college? Maybe that comes up next? I would like to. I never really did in real life. Didn't have the money for it. You were in one of your ultra cool moods. While cruising through the house, you bump your foot on a piece of furniture and let out a swear word sneak. Fuck it up, bigger. Your mother calls you in from the other room. Did you say what I thought you said? Yeah, I'm going to tell you I did, and so what? So what, Mom? I'm done with high school. If I want to say fuckle burgers, I can. It's not like the time of the lawnmower, all right? It's not like the time of the lawnmower. If I want to say fuck burgers, I'm going to say fuck burgers, and you can go fuck burger yourself. Oh. No, it's truthful. I don't... I didn't, and so what? Okay, too cool to care. I didn't, so what? Maybe that's what has to go together. So what? She decides to show you so what. You're not too big to get your mouth washed out with soap. With superhuman strength, she grabs you by your cool haircut, dumps you into the cool bathroom, forces a quarter of a bar of soap with lemon-fresh skin condition down your ultra-cold throat... Am I a wimp? Am I a wimp that my mom can do that? I would be like, no, no, that is abuse. I had that happen to me as a child. I That is not fun. I don't think that is right behavior. Fuck you, mom. No wonder why we have such low family skills. I'm like probably an adult by now, legally. I've graduated high school, and she's still washing my mouth out with soap. She's insane. One of the few older kids in school takes you aside and offers you a quick way to make money by dealing drugs. Wait, I thought I graduated high school. So I'm in college? I'm confused. Nothing too heavy and dangerous, according to him. All you have to do is deal pot and a few lewds. I'm not selling lewds. So no, I'm not going to do it. He tells you that you have passed up the opportunity to make some easy money. He is caught dealing three weeks later, but nothing much happens to him. Three months after that, you read that he was jailed in South America during a drug-related incident. See? Ah, there we go. You've passed through the adolescence phase of life. Family life can be a very rough time during adolescence. Even though your family expects you to take charge of your life, no one wants to let you have the freedom to do what you want. I don't, they don't even let me talk the way I want. Or have my own hair or clothing. Judging you by your progress through life so far, your family life has not been very good. Spending time at home is like going to battle. At times, you aren't sure how you can even live there. Physically, you've not been very healthy. Well, I did get mugged. I got my ass kicked. And some idiot at school dropped me down some stairs. Socially, this phase of life does present its shares of problems. Most of these problems fall into the category of girls. Life was, must have been pretty simple before they showed up. Your social adjustment to this phase of life has been remarkable. I thought for sure we'd get laid in high school, though. I really thought with how good 
prior to that went. Although you do not have a steady girlfriend at the present time, there's always the next phase in life. Now regarding your emotional development, your trustworthiness and sense of fair play are commendable. Ooh, I like that. You are an honest young man, but there's always room for improvement. Puff, puff. Very honest. Yes, yes, yes. It looks like you have had your share of testing the limits and doing things on the spur of the moment. It also looks like some of those things haven't really turned out for the better. Risk taking is a large part of this phase of life. You should take care that you don't let it evolve into plain old foolishness later. You are taking life pretty seriously, aren't you? While well, you are far from depressed, you know, sometimes I get depressed, it seems sometimes it seems that you don't always strive to be the happiest person you can be. Don't judge me, game! I will be as... Oops, I just dropped things on the floor. God, I'm throwing pens and shit everywhere. I have an anger issue. <laughs> wait, 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 I'll be as happy or unhappy as I want. The degree to which you display aggressive types of behavior is somewhat alarming. I'll punch you right now, game! <laughs> Now is the time when you have to keep a tighter check on your hostility. If it gets out of hand, you could wind up in deep trouble. You certainly have had a good head on your shoulders. You're not only book smart, but you also have plenty of common sense. Now that your adolescence is almost over, it's time to be lured out into the abyss of the real world. I bet you didn't know that everything you did so far was part of the fake world. I didn't. I didn't. So the next one is going to be young adulthood. And we'll do that in the next episode. The high school years remarkably did not go as well as I thought. They weren't terrible. They weren't terrible, but, you know, at least I had a cool, like, mohawk and stuff, so. And I worked at a law firm for a while for some reason. I'll see y'all next time when we try the shitty world of adulthood where we have to have a real job and our own place and all that.